Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And as we go into 2021, I'm so excited for this week's roundtable. But before we talk about it, I just have to give everybody a shout out and say Happy New Year to the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Good. Happy New Year, Mark. Good to see you. Good to see you. And of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, good to see you. You too. Thanks. And then Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, how are you? Great, Mark. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And we've got the next Langy coach, and we're going to talk all about her, Taria Harris, whom, by the way, we needed to give a nickname to. It's got to come organically. We'll exactly. figure it out. It might come out even on this, on this podcast. Taria, how are you? I'm well. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, we are so excited to learn more about you and your journey and why you're going to be such an amazing coach. You're already such an amazing Langy coach, but we just haven't publicly introduced you yet. And last but not least, you know him, you love him. You're flight school Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So let's just get started. And um, it's going to be the Taria Harris roundtable. We're all going to go around and ask Taria a question. Um, Scott Bossman, you had like a great beginning question. I'm going to hand the mic to you. All right. Awesome. Well, first of all, Taria, welcome. I think we're all excited to have you as part of the team. Um, and I'm just curious to know, uh, you know, what, what was your why for getting into this business? And is that the same now uh, that you're, you're, you're uh, down the road here now a little bit? Have things evolved at all? Uh, tell us a little, a little bit about that. Uh, sure. Uh, so initially, my husband and I, who we do the land business uh, together, run the business together, we started off in residential. And we thought, you know, we would be these awesome flippers and, you know, he could retire and I could shortly after him retire and we travel the world and just have this awesome life. And a couple projects into that, we realized, whoa, we did not have enough capital. Um, it was a lot harder than we thought and a lot more complicated to kind of get it off the ground. So um, Landon, my husband actually found Mark on a podcast. He was listening for something or to something else, heard about land, came home, and from there, I think the next week we were on a call with you, Scott um, Bossman, trying to get into flight school. So it was an easy transition from where we were in real estate and it just made a lot of sense. It was less complicated. Um, so our why initially was we wanted more time with each other. We were tired of, you know, that clocking in, clocking out and my husband's hard uh, job is requires a lot more time than mine. So it was really to get him into a more stable work-life balance. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Pretty much the same now. It hasn't evolved um, as much. Um, I'll talk about it a little later. It, it's just gotten a little easier now that the business is kind of, you know, doing its thing. So the why is still the same though. We want more time. Yeah, you know, I feel like I jumped the gun having Scott ask that first question where I think it'd be great to give everyone just your background and um, what you did before the land business. Uh, so before the land business, I was uh, in cybersecurity for a while, about 20 years, and kind of helped my husband with some real estate ventures, but kind of stuck to uh, my cybersecurity. Uh, and kind of dabbled in real estate some, had my real estate license in Georgia and thought about, you know, helping both with residential and just saving us a little bit of commissions. So I was familiar with real estate and how it works, not necessarily land, but uh, residential for sure. Okay, great. And you have an interesting hobby. I do. I uh, compete in bikini competitions. So 
bodybuilding is something I enjoy. Although it may not be very apparent now, I'm in my post-COVID condition now, but it's something I enjoy. <laughs> no, it, it's great. And, you know, it's too bad Zano's not on the round table because I know he really wants to compete as well. Really? Yeah. He's, I think that's where he is now, fitness. isn't he? He's, he yeah. might be. Nice. Yeah. I can get him started. You can get him started. Um, all right. So, uh, Tate, what is your question for Taria? Well, I'm excited to have Taria uh, joining the Land Geek family. First of all, she comes from a great mentor herself. She was coasted, coached by none other than Mimi, who was fantastic with her. So I'm excited about that. And we know that uh, you know how to have good success in the land business. So, Taria, my question is, what does your family, your extended family, think of the land business? I mean, this is kind of an unusual line of work to get into. What do your kids think of this? Do they think it's wild? Do they understand it? Have you showed them the light that is uh, land investing? Ooh, tell me about it. So my family, I would assume like most families are like, uh, yeah, show me after it's working, right? So initially it's like, yeah, we're going to sell land. And my mom was the, had the best response. She's like, well, yeah, but I know you're not going to be out, you know, selling that vacant, you know, no one wants that. No one wants raw land. Like it just doesn't seem like a good use of your money and time. And so I said, well, don't worry. And you learn quickly the people to share with and the people who not to share with. So um, with her, it was a matter of, oh, mom, you, you want to know how much passive we're making now? And then coming back three months later, you want to know how much passive we're, you know, we're up to now? And so now she's a believer. Um, but before, everyone was pretty skeptical. It's like, who wants dirt in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. So one of those, once you get it going and, and oftentimes having to kind of block out the naysayers, you know, we believed it would work. And so we only spoke to people who were positive until we were able, as we say, to show them receipts, right? Nope, it's working. I like it. And like your kids, are they intrigued by this? I mean, is this something that they could no, they don't want anything to do with it? Let them league. get real jobs. Let them get real jobs. Then they'll come back to you. Exactly. So my youngest son, who is, uh, he's actually in Phoenix out there with you, Mark. Um, he is in his junior year of college. And we're like, hey, take a look at the business. Maybe you'll run it one day. And he's like, yeah, maybe later. Not, not now. So no interest at all. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I think uh, as your passive continues to grow and your lifestyle gets more and more relaxed, uh, you're going to have more people curious about what you do. I mean, uh, that's what it is for me. I, my neighbors are always asking me, so, so what is it that you do again? And I love answering them because it's like, oh, I have passive income. I, I do some stuff with real estate and leave it a little bit of a mystery. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for you. And I know you're going to be fantastic um, in the coaching program because you have a lot to give. So It's coming around. We Landon will be retiring this summer. So we reached a place where he can actually step away from. And so that is peaking a lot of interest. I mean, with his coaching peers, now everyone is interested in what we're actually doing. So we're hoping to bring some people into the program. Yeah, we should give Landon a little, a little you know, love considering what he does is, is so unique. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just tell everyone what, what Landon does? Yeah, uh, he's a swim coach. So he's going to say that's I'm really not underselling what he coach. does. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so come on. He's been a swim coach for about 25 years now. He has and he's not he's not the coach where you take your two year old to. Right. So most of his swimmers go on to D1 colleges. Um, he actually has a one of his guys is top five in the world. So he has a good chance of making the Olympic team if he, you know, continues. But yeah, he coaches elite swimmers. Yeah, so if that's you're better, Michael Phelps, you go to Landon. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or if your kid is showing, you know, that much talent and potential, it's like, can you get to the next level? You go to Landon. Correct. 
Correct. Right. That's what he um, did. He's going to, they're going to be a lot of disappointed kids who've been in the program for a long time, just waiting to get to him. So he hasn't announced his retirement yet. Okay. Yeah. And, and but it's, it's, it's hard. It's a hard grind. I mean, he's got to get up at what? Three in the morning, three thirty in the morning. Four twenty. Four twenty. For the morning shift. And then he just walked out the house two minutes ago for the evening shift. So they, they swim twice a day, typically. Mark, Scott, you know, uh, it's yeah. one of the coolest, uh, the one of the funniest moments ever in flight school. And I forgot, I forgot the exact setup, but I'm, I was like, does anybody know anybody here? No. And they're like, one guy's like, y yeah, I know Landon. And I'm like, how do you know Landon? Oh, he was my coach. Here, what? Like that on a flight school class? That was the craziest thing because I've never had anybody say like, "Oh, I know someone else on this call." Yeah. They did. That yeah, that's that's insane. He's like a celebrity. He in, is yeah. in the swimming world. Yeah, um, the technician, Eric Peterson. <laughs> All right. Taria, first so of all, it's, it's so weird not having, it's not seeing a rib in your hand while you're talking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Taria, New year, same jokes. Yep. New year, same bad jokes. You got to move on from that yeah. one. <laughs> we're, we're excited to have you on the coaching team. Uh, looking forward to continuing to work with you. I think that, um, you know, one of the most common questions we all get asked is, you know, how did we get started? What did our first deal look like? How much money did we start the business with? So talk to us a little bit about some of those details. Yeah, so we started off um, with maybe $10,000 and that was kind of what we had to work with. And, and we were apprehensive because, you know, you hear in coaching, no, it, or in fly school, doesn't take a lot you know you can make it happen you can make it work um but we were a little scared but i mean we got into it and our first deal we mailed out and a woman kind of responded back and she says well i have 10 properties and this was in colorado and we were like 10 okay and we started pulling together our money and so our first deal was actually we purchased 10 properties from one of our mailings and initially our marketing, we just couldn't get our marketing together. Um, and so we ended up having to wholesale a lot of those, which we still made money on. Um, but it took us about, I'd say about six months to actually get our first terms deal. And so in the midst of those six months, there are a lot of things that go through your head, right? So it's, is this ever going to work? You know, what are we doing wrong? Um, once we got with Mimi, so we went from flight school, I think, into coaching maybe six months later. And once we got into coaching, I mean, we just, we saw how the process worked and we saw it actually beginning to work for us. So within three months of being in coaching, I mean, we had several terms deals. And then at the end of coaching, I mean, we had over 30 terms deals. So it was productive for us. Excellent. Any uh, hiccups along the way? Anything go drastically wrong? Um, oh, not drastically wrong. So what we found was that there really wasn't anything that couldn't be solved, even if, you know, we mucked it up ourselves, right? So um, I think we had an issue with a deed. Um, it wasn't quite done right, but we were able to resolve it. So basic stuff we ran into. Um, and once we fixed it once, you know, you never make that mistake again, you move on to make another mistake, <laughs> you learn how to fix that one. So there was nothing that was drastic. I think for us, the biggest hurdle was just us making sure that we stayed positive when the business ebbs and flows and just sticking with it, even when it looks like it may not be working. Cause if you stick with it, it works. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd. Well, my question is very, very simple. Very simple. Of all of the coaches in this program, who is your favorite? And specifically, who's your favorite 
like who may have taught you flight school. Just saying. No, I'm just kidding. That's just a made up question. Look, no, look how he well, fishes. Well, He's just fishing for compliments. <laughs> how, fishing. how much love do you need, Scott Todd? <laughs> Listen, I just look, it's just, I don't know. I don't say. You are no. my favorite flight school coach there by far. Go. Bye, That's right. yeah. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to the coaching uh, team. Glad you're here. You know, I think I think that a lot of people bring unique experiences to, to coaching, right? Like, you, you know, it's not like uh, coaching in a way isn't like you just decide one day I'm going to be a coach, right? Like there are a lot of dots that connect in your, in your past that I think will make you or break you as a good coach, right? Like anybody can say they're a coach, but that doesn't mean that they're a great coach. And obviously if you're on this team, we believe that you're a great coach, just saying. But what is it in your background that you think that will bring, like what skill set do you think that you'll be able to bring to your coaching clients that will help them level up to be where they wanna be? Because there's something in your past mm -hmm. that I think will make a, a better future for somebody else. Um, that's a great question. So I think a part of what will help me be a good coach is two things. So one, I was an instructor for Oracle, I'm a technical instructor for about 12 years. And so learning to deal with different personality types and learning styles, um, I kind of understand that. Um, helping people from a technical perspective get from where they are to where they want to be, it's, you know, bite-sized steps. And I think that's one of the keys I'll use with uh, my coaching students. Um, another thing that I think I have coaches, I being in the fitness um, and the competition industry, I've had coaches for the last six, seven years. And I know what I require from my coach. And, and I want to make sure that I give what my students will require. So one thing I like for my coaches uh, or I like in a coach is for my, my coach to be, uh, help me be accountable. My coach is not gonna sugarcoat, you know, if I'm doing good, if I'm not doing good, he holds my feet to the fire in, a, in the best way possible, not, you know, from a, I'm a beat you perspective, but, um, I know that when I am doing great, my coach is there to cheer me on. Yay, I'm doing good. And when I stumble, he's there to encourage me and not necessarily to, you know, get me down. Um, I have had coaches that they were there periodically, but not consistent. And so I think consistency with coaching is also very important. Um, not just showing up for my uh my coaching students, but also consistency in holding them accountable to where they want to be, understanding where they want to be, listening, and helping them achieve their goals. So not only do I think um, I understand what I want from a coach, but then I translate that into making sure I can be whatever my uh, coaching students need. Did that answer your question, Scott? I, I, I love that. And, um, you know, what's, what's, I think, very unique about our coaching program compared to others that I've heard about in, in real estate. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll hear stories where uh, from some other people like, yeah, I, was, I, had a, I had a coach and I'd ask them a question and they would ask me, well, what do I think I should do? Like this like Socratic math. I'm like, oh, that, that's not coaching. That's coaching therapy, right? Mm -hmm. Like our program, like, we're all working in the business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to answer the question, but then help you with that mindset as well, get you through those barriers. So it's not just, you know, prescriptive. A lot of the how to, you're going to get those fundamentals in flight school where mm -hmm. coaching is about scaling, getting you to that next level and really pushing you to do the uncomfortable things you don't want to do. They're not natural. It's mm -hmm. like if you're right handed, learning to, to write with your left hand to get to that point where like, oh, this doesn't feel so awkward and uncomfortable. But, you know, certainly if if you ask Tria, um, is this a good county? She's not gonna be like, well, what do you think? <laughs> you know, right. well, yeah, this but this is what we do for county research. This is how we determine a good county. You go back to your 
your, your, your fundamental training, then we're gonna help you get to that next level and, and look at it from the CEO point of view versus, you know, you start in and then getting to on, the, you know, working on the business. And um, what's, you know, so unique about your situation, your background, I think is that you had a great coach with Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter, you know, guiding you, getting you guys to that next level so that you were in the business. Now you're the CEO working on the business. And then all that knowledge uh, gets transferred to your coaching client with all that other background knowledge from mm -hmm. the technical aspect of Oracle to, you know, um, fitness, which is really hard. So I, I think it's, it's a really interesting sort of blend, like, of, of like coaching stew, like you put all these ingredients and you get Taria, like that's going to taste delicious. And I think it's going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm married so. to a coach. So he helps me as well. Even, you know, when we were going through with Mimi and like my coach, oftentimes he'll say, you know, this is what I need you to do. And even if I don't quite see it, um, I know that based on his past performance, where he is, nope, sure enough, he knows better than I do. And even in those moments where I feel like that doesn't make sense, you know, my husband is in my ear, like, why pay a coach if you're not going to listen? You know, so he helps me <laughs> see the full picture of coaching as well. No, uh, absolutely. Well, I, I thought this was uh, good. Was there, was there anything we should have asked you we didn't ask you? Um, no, you guys ask really good questions. <laughs> All right, Tate's got this I'm, look on I'm his face. I'm glad you didn't ask anything about like tips because we're not ready for tips yet. Oh, the tips yeah. are coming, Taria. That's You're on next. for next week. You're next. next week, I thought I thought she was here for now. Who's got the tip of the week? <laughs> yeah, wait Taria a second. <laughs> Taria. Okay, I do have a tip. I do have a tip. Oh, <laughs> she took the bait. I can't believe wow. you guys. See what happens when you push, Mark? You push. I do have. Yeah. A, if you are remotely interested in the land business, join flight school. Oh. oh. Wow. wow. That's my uh, tip. That's, <laughs> oh. It's you know, a New Year's it's, tip. Was that cheating? It's your first time. It's your I, first time. We're going to let this slide. I've got a good tip this week. It's her nickname I, right there. The tipster. That, that's it. <laughs> the tips, yeah, right. the tipster. For, for years, for years, Eric was known by his tip of the week, and now we got the tipster. I don't know what to say. You know, I, I like this. How about put in your reps? Taria, like put in your reps, Harris. I like that. I like that. There you go. That, I like that. Yeah. Um, from the dude buddy, the Nightcap OG. <laughs> Scott, why, why, what made you think of putting in your reps? Listen, I mean, she, she, she puts in her reps to be um, an athletic superstar. Her husband does that. They did it in their land business. Uh, and it's, that's what this business is all about. It's all about showing up and just putting in the reps every single day. And we talked about this earlier. You don't feel like you're making a change when you're on that Peloton, you know, at 5,000 output, feeling like you're going to keel over. Uh, you, you realize you made the change a year later when you've, you know, had all these strength gains and you're feeling better and your, your heart's better and your weight's better and all that stuff. And that's how land business is. And I mean, she lives that every day. So what, what better person to be a land geek coach, honestly? No, it, it, absolutely. It does, it does sort of beg the question. I, I'd love to know, Tria, you know, because you're used to working hard and now you go into coaching and we're like, okay, now it's time to work really smart. Yes. Was that a hard transition to start delegating, outsourcing, using all the automation tools when you're like, I can just muscle through this. It was very hard. It was very hard until you realize it's not sustainable. Right? So it was hard in the beginning because I can knock it out in two minutes. Why do you want me to train someone and have to spend an hour teaching them when I can get it done? Um, but 
then you realize when I think it was Mimi, it was either Mimi or Tate we were talking to and you start quantifying how much, how much time are you putting in? What are you worth? Like what's your value? What's your hourly rate? And so my hourly rate doesn't compare to what I can give, you know, for someone to get the job done. So it was a mindset, a mindset shift. Um, but there's always something else to do in the business. So once you delegate something off, you can focus on something more, I won't say important, but something else. Right. Something more valuable. Valuable. Gonna move the needle. Right. right. All right. Well, great. Um, well, I think this has been fantastic. And now we're at that point where um, before I do the tip of the week, since none of you came prepared except for me, um, Why you I, are do, I do want to give out a shout out to our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income today. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Second best time? is now. So start building that foundation and start seeing how that passive income can literally change your life, work when you want, where you want, with whom you like, with whom you want, solve not just your money problems, but you also your time problems and have that Sherpa, Scott Todd, take you up that mountain of land investing. He's done it thousands of times, quickly, safely, efficiently, and guess what? It ain't gonna cost you nothing. That tuition you're gonna make back, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us your work. That's it. That's how confident we are. So how do you learn more? Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with Scott Bossman or Mike Zeno, the landgeek.com forward slash training and start the year right. All right, so my tip of the week. You guys interested? Absolutely. Always. Yeah. Um, just real quickly, I'm just going to go around. Eric Peterson, have you ever played Texas Hold'em poker? Yes. Scott Todd, Texas Hold'em poker? No. Tate Litchfield, Texas Hold'em poker? No. No. Scott Bossman, Texas Hold'em poker? A little bit, yes. A little bit. Taria Harris? Yes. Texas Hold'em poker. Okay, so there's a book out. Um, called The Biggest Bluff by Maria Konnikova. And I'm telling you, the metaphor that she makes for learning how to play poker and how it translates into life is phenomenal. I'm like halfway through. But basically, poker is sort of this beautiful analogy to life because we all, in life, like we only have so much data. And at some point we have to do things with not all the data is there's now we've got to increase our probabilities and there's always chance that can just ruin things. And, or, you know, there's always luck and chance that we had no business being successful. We were successful anyway. And, you know, so it's, it's really about clear thinking and, um, and making good decisions, not about whether you win or lose in poker, because the best poker players are the clearest thinkers. And that's why they win more. It's like the skill game. And it's a really, really interesting read. So my tip of the week is the biggest bluff. You'll see as you read it or listen to it, how it equates to land business, life, um, success, and, and grit and um and how she uses her mentor um i think it's eric seidel who he's most famous for i mean he's won like 30 million in you know earnings for he's like one of the top poker players in the world but if you ever watch the movie rounders uh johnny chan is on is is the guy that wins in the world series of poker i think in 98 and he's he beats eric seidel who comes in second and then eric seidel goes on and wins it many times but um, I've never been a huge fan of poker, but now, um, and I, I'm probably not going to be a huge fan of poker, but I love the, the book and, and the metaphor, uh, for sure. And just, you know, talk about putting in your reps, how her mentor is guiding her into these, you know, she wants to go right away, like 
Scott and I were talking about how people want to do 10,000 letters in you know, their first month of coaching and they're not ready for it. And she wants to go into these bigger tables. And he's like, no, I'm starting you online. She has to go online poker first before she can even get to a live table. And, and he's quizzing her on, how, on her thinking. And he could care less on if she wins or loses. It's like, how are you, how are you thinking? And it's, it's, it's great. So um, there you go. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to the listeners and remind them that the only way we're going to get Teresa to come back next week is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you that wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less for free. Please do it. Um, are we good? Eric Peterson, are we good? We're good. Tate? Yeah, we're great. Scott Bossman? You're on, you're on mute. You're still on mute. That's okay. Give us a thumbs up. Can't hear us. He, Scott, Todd, are we good? He's frozen. He's frozen. Right. That's, it's that Wisconsin Wi-Fi. Oh wait. He's oh no! Open. Now he's no. Now he's back. He uh, must have turned Trier, us off. Yeah. Tree, are we good? We're good. All right. For your first time doing this. Yeah. Um, I hope it's not too. Uh, yeah, he lost his audio. Too. Uh, too awkward. So, Scott Vossman, you can just watch. You can just mouth it. One, two, three. Let's let. Freedom, Freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Macintoshes. <laughs> That's what it is, man. It's Mark had with his. Boston's with his. No Dirt issues. It's solid. funny. It's funny coming from the guy who just bought the new Mac. That's well, right. How is that? Air, but not as my as as a good laptop. But not as uh, the main the main driver here. The main driver here is the service, and look how great it looks. Forms. <laughs> who who there. buys a MacBook Air just for fun? Like, what are you doing on time? It's not just for fun, fun. It's that like I'm not using it to work on all day long. I use it like at night when I'm sitting on the couch, uh, or watching TV, or if I'm at the hangar, just want something I can take with me. It's it's a great device, but from a desktop. I'm, I'm sorry, could you? I, I'm sorry, you cut off there. <laughs> what is it again? You heard me. Oh, are you having Mac issues with your audio, like Bossman? Is that what happens? Is that why you cut off? It's that new chip, right? That M. That is it. The, it's the M1 chip. How how yeah, long does your how long does that battery last compared to your Surface? Well, the Surface is longer. Um, like the, I'll tell you the other morning I, I uh, took it with me. I, it was hundred percent charged when I left. Um, la, let's see, I started working on it about seven thirty and around um, ten thirty in the morning. And I wasn't watching video. I was like email. There wasn't like high CPU usage. And I was at 30% after three hours of steady usage, three hours. So I'm like, really three hours, but you know, it it's not as long as what they say it is. It never is, but it's not bad. The the performance is good. There there are some hiccups because I tried because of Apple, because I tried to install something, and it's like well, uh, you can't install this because um, I forgot the um, oh, so so the because of the Apple chip. In order for you to run certain applications, you have to run this application that Apple made called Rosetta. And the problem with Rosetta is that not everything is compatible with Rosetta. So I'm trying to, to like use an application and it's like, well, we can't run on Rosetta. And I'm like, well, then I can't use your product. Come on, Apple, like what gives, man? So I guess in time, they'll make it so that you don't have to use Rosetta or more people will comply to use with Rosetta. I don't know. Well, when you're a $2 trillion company, people are going to comply to use Rosetta. They, they will. They will. But in the meantime, it's like uh, that that's no good. So back to the surface. All right. Tria, where, where, where are you on this debate? Mac or PC? 
I'm a Mac girl. I'm an Apple girl. All things Apple. Phone, computer, I'm um, all things Apple. <laughs> it's just a Scott Todd, another life. this is Why? this is a majority running, now. Hold on a minute. Are we running a popularity contest here? Or are we are or are we like looking for the best applications possible? The best utilization possible. Not the best show. I mean, Microsoft yeah. TV. When's that coming? <laughs> what do you need? What do you need that for? I'm getting a TV show for. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I just, I just, I think I just read somewhere they're gonna try to steal again from Apple and change their UI. Yeah. So, you know, you know there's nothing like being being, you know, five years behind trying to catch up. That's all right. That's all right. Just, Listen, how, how is it that, how do you do it, Mark, when you need to write on your screen? Do you, do you take out a real marker and write on your, like Sharpie it on your screen or, oh, you can't write on your screen. But when I need to like show something and really like emphasize something when I'm teaching and I whip out this magic pen, this magic pen, baby, gets the point across. How do you do that? Oh, you can't do it. Oh, you got to go on an iPad or a Wacom tablet. Saying. Saying. Eric Peterson, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. All of those Macs, they just all froze audio wise. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know what to say. I mean, he's, he's going to bring up the stylus. Man. It's just one use case that one Scott use has case. to have, <laughs> and it doesn't apply to everybody else. But really? right, no, it does. It does. Let me tell you why. Yeah, it applies to a flight school pro professor. That's it. When you're coaching your students, and you need to and you need to mind map something, you guys got to go like, oh, let me take out my mouse and move it over here and type. Da, da, da. You're doing it so 2019. Like your mind maps, me, I draw it all out. There, there is love in drawing on that screen. It is customized to people. You guys are doing it archaic way. Oh, I see. I, ah. Not forget. to mention, not to mention, it's not legible either, Scott. Right. Listen, right. it does. No, right. you know what? It's memorable. Doesn't I want need to my be legible. Coaching it's students memorable. to be able to go back and read those mind maps. Yeah. No, yeah. they take their own notes. They photographic memory. I mean, I will say my, my son has a surface, so we are a divided house and he's too, he's doing his math tutor. So he, he's, he's like, dad, it'd be, you know, it'd be great if I could get the Wacom top tablet. I'm like, why? He's like, well, when I'm tutoring and I'm writing on the screen, I can't see what I'm writing. So it'd be great if I had this. And I thought to myself, another device, huh? So it just kind of ruins the whole use case for it. Surface. So he has he again. He had to get two devices. So take your stylus and uh, use it. Scribble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that, wait a minute, wait. we'll what see you next week. He have? He's got the. He doesn't have the studio. He's got to have the right no. tool. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, he'll talk to Uncle, he'll have to talk to Uncle Scott. Listen, call, tell him to call Uncle Scott. I'll, I'll set him right. I'll tell him, I'll tell him to exactly what he needs to tell his dad to go get him. Okay. All right. Anytime. All right. Well, on that note, um, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.